Before you do any work with your DNA, you want to make sure that you're wearing the proper equipment. You need to have your goggles on your face, covering your eyes. You want to make sure that you have your gloves on and that you have an apron, and it should be tied in the back. <laughs> All right. What you're going to do next is you come over. You have a few pieces of equipment out in front of you. The first thing that you're going to need to work with is your gel, which is right here. Your teachers have already made this for you, and it's set. These little indents right here that we're looking at, those are your wells. Now this needs to go into your chamber, which is this structure over here. This is the bottom part, and this is the top that goes with it. To prepare it to go in, I need to remove the bumpers. These are those red plastic parts on the side. These were used to allow the gel to set, but now that we're actually going to run it, we need to take them off. So they are just squeezed on the edges. So very gently but firmly, I pull them directly off on each direction. All right, so now that I have my bumpers off, I'm going to pick up my plastic container for my gel and I'm going to lower it slowly into the chamber using the channels to kind of keep the plastic mold in place. Oh, the way that I want to do it is you want to pay attention here because you'll have two different color leads coming off of here. You'll have a red and you'll have a black. Now DNA is negative, meaning that it's going to run towards the positive. So I just put it in the wrong way with my DNA chambers facing towards the red, I mean towards the black, and I want to orient it this way. So the reason that I want it this way is because I'm going to load my DNA sample in here. The current is going to run negative to positive, so that means that my DNA will run towards this positive end here. So you want to have your chambers that we're going to fill closest to this black end, and you want to have the direction that your DNA is heading towards the red or your positive end. Now that I've got it set up like this, I'm going to add my buffer in. On the front of your chamber, what you'll notice is that there is a line right here that's labeled fill line. This is the maximum amount of buffer that you're going to want to pour into your chamber. Now that what we're looking for as far as minimum amounts is you want to make sure that you add enough buffer to this gel that you are going to cover your gel. There we go. So what we've done there is added enough buffer so that we're able to cover our gel. We do not necessarily have to go up to this fill line, we just want to make sure we don't go above that fill line. Now you may notice that when you look in there that your gel floats a little bit because we've just added buffer to it, that is fine. If it detaches just a little bit, it's not a huge concern. You can still load it, you can still run it. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to actually load my samples into each of the chambers. Now in order to make sure that I know where each of my samples have been loaded, what I've created is a little bit of a lane map. Now you are going to add yours and you want to make sure you label your lane map because you'll be sharing with another group. We'll notice that we have eight spots on our lane map. The two on our edges right here, so the furthermost out chambers, you are not going to use. So those are going to stay empty. And the reason for that is that when the gel sets, it's possible to get tears in those ones so that if you load it with sample, it'll just seep out into your buffer. Now what I need to do next is I'm going to start over closest to me and I'm going to start in my second chamber and load my first sample in it. As soon as I do that, I'm going to have my partner record what I'm, in reporting, what I'm entering in there. So I pick it up, I see what I'm looking at. So this is my Pennsylvania strand. So my lab partner is going to fill in a note right here saying that my second chamber, or second lane rather, is going to have my Pennsylvania strand in it. Now there's just a little bit of liquid in here, so to make sure I'm getting the most of it, I'm going to tap it down like that, just to get anything that I have off the edges. Now I'm going to pick up my micro pipette. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a tip right here. I'm going to use my pointer finger to kind of support that tip. My thumb is going to go on here to depress down and make sure that I'm getting my sample up and to deposit inside my gel. To get the tip to actually pick my sample up, you're going to have one of these containers by you. You're going to put this in here and place down firmly to make sure that you get your tip on. Once I've done that, I open up my sample. I'm then going to put this straight down into the sample. I'm going to push down, and what you'll notice is that there are two stops. There's one where you're going to have a soft stop right there, and that's going to basically give you a little bit of resistance, and if I keep pushing past that, I'll get to my second stop. To load my sample, what I do is I push down to the first soft stop, and I insert it into my sample. I want to make sure that it's submerged in there, and then I release and allow it to draw back up into my tip. What you should do is do a visual check now. You should have your sample inside your tip. So there we are good, we've got our sample loaded. Now to put my sample inside, I know that I've already labeled that I'm going into my second chamber, so I'm going to position myself so that I'm looking over and directly down. I'm going to use my hand, my non-dominant hand, to support my arm to make sure that I'm being steady here. What I need to do is go in directly down at a 90 degree angle into my chamber. 
I want to be careful here not to puncture the bottom. Now I'm going to push down first to my soft stop, then all the way down, and then I will draw out. What you are looking for right there is you should do a visual check on your chamber to make sure that you have filled it up. If you've punctured through the bottom, what you'll see is your stain starting to seep through the bottom. If you've missed your chamber, you'll see your sample start to float around in the buffer above. So that's how you're going to load your first chamber. At each loading station, there will be a beaker labeled with waste. Once I'm done loading each of my samples, we want to make sure not to cross-contaminate, so I should never use the same tip for more than one sample. To remove it, what I'll do is hold onto the tip and pull firmly down and away to remove it and deposit it into my waste container. Now what I'm going to need to do is move on to my second sample. So I'm going to pick up my second one. This one is called Missouri Strain, so I asked my partner to label my third lane in this case with the Missouri. I tap down to make sure that I've got it in there. Remove the cap. I then come over here and push down firmly to make sure that I have my second new clean tip on. I'm then going to push down to my first stop. I'm going to insert it into my sample. I want to keep my eyes on this, make sure I've got as what I need. Pull it up into my tip. Put that back down. Now I come back over. I want to make sure it's a little difficult to see, so I want to make sure that I'm using the correct lane. I use my non-dominant to support my hand, and I go down directly into the chamber. Push down first to my first stop, then down to my second stop, and then pull directly out straight. All right, now that I'm done with that one, I take the tip off, and I'm just going to repeat this one more time. So pull the tip off of this one, put that away, return the cap onto this one. tap down my third sample. I read what it is, so this is the Alabama strain, so I ask my partner to label our last lane, so in this case this will be the fourth one in, it's Alabama. I remove the top on this, put a new tip on, place firmly down, push to my first soft stop, insert it into the sample, draw up, put this back down, come back over to my gel, Support my dominant with my non-dominant. Come in straight down, keeping my eye on that chamber as I go. Push all the way down to my soft stop. And then I pull out. If you get a little bit of dye outside, that is absolutely fine. You remove your last tip into the waste container. Now at this point, I've used all of my materials. So I'm going to make sure that I clean up after myself and then I'm going to let the next group go. They're gonna lay use their three empty lanes to lay, load their materials in, and then we'll talk about how we're gonna run this. All right, so now that we've got our lanes all loaded with our samples, each group has gone, what we're gonna do is plug this into the power box and actually run this gel. So remember DNA is negative, so it's gonna to run towards the positive end, and that's how we're gonna see our banding. So what we'll notice here is that we should have black wires coming out. On your power box, you'll notice that you have a sign that is black colored, so it's got a nice plastic label on the inside that corresponds with this, and it has the negative symbol. So I'm going to plug that in there, and then take my red lead, which is my positive, and again, I see my red coloring here with my positive symbol, and I plug it in there. I want to double check to make sure that this is pushed up to 110, and here is your reading, so if you want to check it afterwards. The last thing that I'm going to do is make sure that my wires are running through here, and I need to put the top on. So I'll push down firmly make sure that my leads are connected here. Once I have my leads connected, my top on, the last thing I'm gonna do is turn it on. You should notice that the red light comes on to indicate that there is actually electricity running into this apparatus. The last thing that we're gonna to do to make sure that this is actually working is if we take a look very closely to the negative end, you should see bubbles coming out and they should be flowing towards your red or positive end. This is what we actually are seeing here in terms of the voltage or the charge traveling across our DNA. And this is what's physically gonna pull those molecules towards the positive end so we see those banding patterns. All right, so now that you're done running your gel, you're gonna remove the top off of here. You should check to see where your bands are. So they should be about maybe a half inch or so from the end of your gel. You do not want to allow them to run off. So then you're gonna reach in, you're gonna pull out your container. Your gel might be floating around a little bit. Oh, I'm gonna put it this way. Ah. There we go. All right. So once I pull it off, what I'm gonna do is put my gel into my staining tray right there, and it'll slide very easily off of this container. 
What I need to do now is put my final stain, so my Carolina Blue DNA stain on here. Now this will stain your skin as well as your clothes and everything else. So you want to make sure that you're wearing gloves, goggles, and that you're being careful. When you pour this in, you need just enough in order to cover your gel. And you do not need much more than that. Pour it in. Once this is in here, it's going to sit for about 20 to 30 minutes to allow the stain to adhere, adhere to the DNA so we'll be able to see our bands a little bit better. So now that I've got my stain on there, I want to make sure this lid is securely back on and then we let this sit for 20 or 30 minutes.